Christmas Day that year, at the time, we were still a very small project. It was really just a hobby project, and I put it into the nonprofit. And on Christmas Day, uh, we had three servers, and two of them crashed. Um, and so then, and, and the place where they were hosted was closed. I couldn't get anybody to go in, and then my employees were all on holiday, so nobody was nearby. So for about three or four days there, we were struggling on just one computer, and it was a really <laughs> difficult time. Uh, and that was when we decided to do the first fundraiser, because at the time, I just didn't know for sure how effective is this going to be. Is it going to be possible to raise enough money to do this? Um, and so I posted the first appeal for donations, and we we raised, I was trying to get $20,000 uh, within a couple of weeks, and we raised the money in less than a week, and it, we actually went over, and we had more than we needed. Um, and we were, that was the first time that I went and bought eight servers, um, and really was able to improve the whole situation dramatically. Um, and that was when we first uh, thought, I, I f first felt comfortable that getting support from the general public was gonna be successful, and, and it has been since then. Um, so now that I answered the first question, now I forgot the second. Why, why Wikipedia, Yahoo, all born in the States, uh, uh, not in, yes. in Europe? So, um, that's a really big and very interesting question. So the question is, um, why have a lot of these innovations come from the U.S. Uh, rather than from Europe? Um, the one thing I did want to say, though, that I do think is very important is that I think it's a mistake if we think of Wikipedia as being somehow American. Yeah. Um, every language of Wikipedia is written by local people. Uh, there's no one in the office uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation who's monitoring Italian Wikipedia. That's all done by everyone in, in you know, who's speaking Italian anywhere in the world, and it's mostly done from Italy, of course. So that's important. We consider ourselves very global, even though the headquarters is in California. That's just a, for legal reasons. That's just where we're from. Um, well, I think there's a lot of reasons. I mean, I think that there are a lot of uh, difficulties in Europe uh, with the support for entrepreneurs. Um, I know a lot of entrepreneurs um, who are, you know, internet entrepreneurs. Uh, from Europe who have moved to the US um, for all of the classic reasons. It's much easier to start a business there. I think there's a cultural uh, support for people who are entrepreneurs that's much stronger in the US. Um, Europe is not the worst. I mean, there are, there are places, uh, uh, you know, where, uh, well, it, I, I heard people in, in Korea, for example, when I was in Korea, they were talking about how if you try to be an entrepreneur and start, start a company, um, they said, well, your mother is just going to freak out, uh, you know, that you should go and work in a big company and it's very prestigious and you're going to go to some crazy thing on your own that they just don't understand that, they don't really support it in the culture. Europe is somewhere in the middle, I think, uh, compared to the U.S. There's also, a, we're talking about the internet industry in particular, and the internet industry, um, there is a very high concentration of people uh, very talented people, talented connections and things like this, all in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, Wikipedia is not born from San Francisco. I was living in, uh, uh, I was living in California, in, in San Diego, California when I started it, but it really grew when I was living in Florida. And in fact, even today, most of our servers are still in Florida, uh, just because, well, once you have servers running, it's not easy to move them anywhere else. So. We have uh, the bulk of the, the computers are in Florida because of historical reasons. So we don't really come from the Silicon Valley culture. Um, we're, we're a nonprofit, we don't have venture capital money. Uh, but we moved the headquarters there because there's so many different people, partners we may work with and things like that. So even though the internet is a very virtual industry in a certain sense, I still think individual human relationships are very important. Uh, I think that the main thing that is uh, important for uh, Europe and a lot of other places in terms of encouraging innovation um, is really to think about ways of encouraging the whole idea of a venture capital industry and the idea of angel investing. Uh, because in many cases it's very hard for uh, young people to get the capital to get started. I mean, when you, have, when you think about trying to go to a traditional bank to get money for some crazy idea on the internet, this is never going to work. <laughs> but if you have uh, the ability of people to pool their money and well, let, let's be honest about it. It's very high risk. Venture capital, um, you know, most of the investments are failures, um, but a few of them turn into Google or Facebook um, and pays for all the others. And that creating that culture of connections and that, uh, uh, well, I, in many cases it's tax laws and things like that would 
which may implicitly discourage that kind of innovation. I think that's one of the main things that people can look at. Sì, salve. Volevo sapere, volevo porre anche io un paio di domande. Penso c'è bisogno di ripetere l'una l'altra, non c'è problema. E, la prima è se lei è soddisfatto dell'attuale stato delle licenze open che, che, quelle, che appartengono alla famosa famiglia delle Creative Commons che permettono a Wikipedia, Wikia di pubblicare liberamente i loro contenuti oppure se sente la necessità di una tutela ulteriore per i contenuti pubblicati in questo modo um, non so, anche a fronte di, di enti politici, di corporazioni, di aziende che cercano di, piuttosto di uh, reprimere la pubblicazione di, di certi contenuti a loro um, non convenienti oppure sotto, sottoposti a vincolo per così dire di monetario nel senso che a loro, uh, per questi soggetti coinvolti, produce ricchezza, invece la, la, la libera pubblicazione di questi contenuti in qualche modo li danneggia. E, e la seconda domanda si, riallaccia, si vorrebbe riallacciare a questo concetto perché piacerebbe sapere come Wikimedia, Wikipedia e Wikia si tutelano sia politicamente che tecnicamente contro gli atti di censura e repressione che detti, dette corporazioni o eh, governi totalitari possono operare sui contenuti che vorrebbero essere pubblicati. Ok. So I'm going uh, I'm going to divide those questions up a little bit differently because I think the the first question uh, is about the the licensing model and the second question is about um, censorship. So on the the licensing model uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably happy. Uh, right now, uh, Wikipedia is using the Creative Commons uh, Attribution Share Alike license. Uh, a lot of the images are under uh, Creative Commons Attribution license. Um, we're, we're happy with the licenses. Uh, Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization, uh, very international, uh, which exists to create legal frameworks so that people have the ability to share their work in a comfortable way. Um, and they're really meeting a very um, acute need on the internet because lots of people want to post their work and let other people reuse it. Uh, but the default situation today is that anything you post is automatically under copyright and other people aren't allowed to use it unless you give them permission. And Creative Commons has been very important in creating a very standardized way that people can give permissions, but they give just the permissions they want. There are many different Creative Commons licenses. Uh, the ones we use uh, at uh, Wikipedia are the freest possible licenses. We want everything to be completely free in the sense that I outlined uh, with, uh, you know, you can redistribute, you can modify, you can do commercially or non-commercially, we want all those freedoms to be there. Uh, but sometimes people don't want to share that way. They want to say, well, I want to, I want to share my work and let anyone use it, but only if they're doing something non-commercial. And so that's one set of licenses. Um, people may say, I, I'm writing an essay, it's my personal political opinion and I want it to be shared widely. I think it's important, I want lots of people to read it. So I want to give everyone permission to distribute it and in fact I don't even mind if they sell it. They can do it commercially, they can do it non-commercially, but they can't modify it because this is my essay, it's my passionate words. And so I'm not going to get the right to modify. So Creative Commons is a very nice framework for allowing people to choose exactly how they want to share their work. Um, the second question was really about censorship. Um, what kind of problems or issues do we face? Well, so first of all, I'll say corporations have absolutely no ability to censor anything. Um, they can choose not to publish something themselves and things that they own. That's not censorship, that's just them choosing to publish what they publish. Um, censorship would mean that they're forcing us to stop doing something and they have no ability to do that. Um, Within Wikipedia, of course, uh, anyone can come and try to affect the content, but if someone comes and tries to uh, change Wikipedia in a way that's biased, the community finds that very quickly, uh, and they have a lot of different tools for controlling for that, and they really look out for it a lot. And uh, most big companies uh, understand, because they've seen so many cases of people being embarrassed by making some inappropriate uh, edit in Wikipedia, that they know you know, professional communications people know uh, that's not the right way to deal with Wikipedia. Um, 
if there's an error in Wikipedia, you should come and treat people with respect and talk to them and basically open a dialogue, send an email with 